What's good everybody? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to go over just 20 different items that are budget friendly uh, that you can take on your next adventure for nature and wildlife photography. Uh, this is nothing camera related, lens related, uh, nothing like that. These are just uh, nice to have items, not necessarily needed. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first one is some type of sling bag. Backpacks are nice for the longer hikes, but if you're just going on a short you know, short hike away from your vehicle, having some form of small sling bag is nice to have. Drape over your shoulder. A lot of it's waterproof up top. And then when you open it up, it has the inserts already in there. These are really nice and convenient to have um, when you don't want to lug around your big you know, backpack or cam big camera bag out in the field. Next one is going to be some kind of personal uh, IFAC or individual first aid kit. You really don't need to go out and buy yourself an expensive big kit. You can kind of just makeshift and make your own. That's what I did here. And uh, just in this nice little pouch here that can attach to your bag along with a map of my area. Then I love having these pocket guide books. Uh, if you have any downtime and you're waiting for the wildlife uh, to show up or just if you're back at your vehicle and you're at base camp or whatever, having these little small pocket um, pocket guides are really cool uh, to have and learn from and they have a bunch of you know different species and you can learn the habitats these are really small too and uh, they can fit right in your your sling bag all right so uh, the next one is a pocket knife now you, you know you chances are you're not going to always need a pocket knife but anytime you're out in the back country and out in the field uh, you just never know what you're going to run across or what you're going to need uh, a knife for. So just having some kind of uh, pocket knife, be it a folder or a fixed blade, uh, is always handy just in case. Next up is the good old camera strap. Uh, you can just attach your strap here to your camera and have it readily available on you at all times. Next up, a head torch. These things are vital when you are getting out into location early in the morning at uh, dawn or dusk, uh, late in the afternoon and evening. So the next one is kind of wacky and weird, but uh, that is a little bit of gaffer's tape or duct tape wrapped around a playing card. Uh, really thin, minimalistic, takes up virtually no space in your bag or you can just put it in your wallet for that matter. In case your tripod completely breaks shatters or something, you, you really never know what you're gonna come across out in the field. And uh, having that ability to you know, temporarily fix it until you can get back to the house, uh, in my opinion, is a vital piece of kit. Right, here's another piece of small kit that is lightweight that I absolutely love having and utilizing is one of these little small tin cans. And what I find these things useful for is maybe a small snack that you can slip in your pocket or some medications or anything like that. If you smoke tobacco out in the field, having it for that, or even a little bit of coffee for a break. Really handy, small, and lightweight. So the next one is having some kind of little food container just in case for like a sandwich or you know if you don't want to carry a bag around that can tear in your backpack. What goes with food is water. Uh, bring more water than what you think you're going to need because most of the time you're going to need more especially in the summertime where you have to continuously hydrate. I usually bring uh, a water filter just in case when I'm two, three, four, five, six miles away from my vehicle just in case. Uh, but for a short hike just bring a little small canteen or thermos. Uh, it's always nice to have as well. These things work great. You can just sling it over your shoulder and just walk around. During the winter time it's always nice to have uh, flip gloves and mittens slash mittens. You have the fingerless and the, the thumb folds over like that. But these work really well to be able to access your camera during the winter time without having to take your glove off. Flip over the mitten to protect your hands or protect your fingers. Uh, with the wind chill and it's just absolutely ridiculous. I have these wool inserts here and keep your hands extremely warm to where you can just have the insert underneath the glove for even added more warmth. Then a nice wool hat, another form of headgear, and that is a beanie cap. Or you can use a baseball cap as well during the summer months to protect your eyes. But it's always nice to have these uh, beanie caps, these sun hats, to definitely protect your entire head and your back of your neck, especially the back of the neck. All right, so next up is a spray bottle. 
very very convenient handy to have and really cheap you get this for like a quarter or 50 cents or a dollar at your dollar store and, uh, it's good in the summer months just spray the back of your neck and uh, cool yourself off but also back at base camp or at your car you can utilize this to you know clean off some of your gear that's not electronics or even your pots and pans your cookware if you're out cooking so uh, you can get them in really really smaller sizes as well all right so next is a, an extra shirt uh, just because, you know, having different types of layers will help you be able to cool off or warm up uh, whichever season that you're in. I've learned when I was in the military how to roll these up fairly easily and quickly. You just fold in the sleeves and you're just going to fold it over again and then you're just going to roll it. And this way it takes a very small print in your bag. Alright, next is um, mud boots. Completely waterproof. Uh, when I'm out and about, I don't have to worry about it. Complete, they're all rubber. Uh, so having a good pair of mud boots is good to have in your vehicle. Uh, where are we at next? Camo netting. This is great for draping over your camera gear um, and uh, having a little bit more concealment. Next up is a small portable cooking stove. These are handy and they fold up nice and neat in your bag. And then when you're out in the field and you take a break and you have some downtime, you can read a book, read one of your field field guides. Hold the ends out like that. And then you can uh, light it and then just put your pot or your uh, canteen or your cup on top of that. And uh, you're good to go. Next, if you're going to be sitting for a long period of time and you don't have a blind with you, because those are big and bulky, these things are a little bit more easier and more convenient. And that is portable hiking chairs. I have two here that I utilize, uh, but the first one here is a foldable one. And you take the seat, take the poles, the ends of the poles, and put them in these slots. Like that. Now you got yourself a really lightweight field chair. These things are extremely light too. The second one is also really lightweight for what it is. It's a folding one. And it's one piece though, it's not two pieces. So you can just put this around your shoulder and carry it out or strap it on your backpack. And it just comes down like that. And there you go. <laughs> nice field chair for your adventures. I love these things, I just keep them typically just in my back of my vehicle. But if I'm gonna be stationary for a while and I just wanna camp out and, and relax in one spot and wait for the wildlife to come to me, and I'm not bringing my big bulky, um, my blind, my chair blind, I'll just bring this thing along. So on those rainy, cold days out in the field, and there's gonna be plenty of those, especially ones that just pop up out of nowhere, having a rain jacket is very important to have. Uh, but having something that is going to be completely waterproof and have a nice hood. Next is going to be for car photography. Uh, the first item is my window, car door window bean bag. This is great for even hiking along the backcountry where you want to get really low. Have it as a platform right here. You can fold it in half and have a platform. You can just rest your camera uh, as you're laying down on the ground. Uh, or in the vehicle, you can put it right over your car door uh, window and shoot from your window. As well as these car door mesh uh, windows. A, that keeps the bugs out. Uh, and B, you can, uh, if you wanted to, cut a hole the size of your lens in the middle of that and then be able to have your window rolled down, uh, keep the bugs out, have your window rolled down, getting a breeze or whatever, but also be able to fit your lens right out of the window. Uh, these things are just elastic and they fit right over your window. If I can, I'll find a link to all the gear uh, and it'll be linked down in the description below if you guys want to check that out yourself. Next up is a garbage bag. This one is kind of funny, but at the same time, it's really uh, helpful, uh, but they work really well for your gear too. If it's starting to rain and you don't have a rain cover for your backpack or your sling bag, you know, waterproofing your backpack and your gear, uh, it works well for. But also if you're out on the trail and you see you know, garbage, unfortunately, that happens all too often. You want to you know, have that opportunity available to you 
to pick up any kind of trash that might be along the trailhead. Uh, next two items is a field journal and a pair of earbuds. Uh, now the field journal works really well because it's less of a distraction from our cell phones. I've said this time and time again, I rant and rave about having a field journal where you can write down uh, the habitats, the time, the locations, uh, the behavior of the wildlife, and just your thoughts and feelings and opin opinions on uh, just whatever's on your mind while you're out there in the field. Uh, earbuds. Typically, I don't use these to listen to music and stuff like that when I'm out uh, on my hikes. I'm enjoying the moment listening to the wildlife and uh, stuff like that. But these are important if you need to make an emergency phone call to be hands-free, walking, talking, answering your phone. Uh, just in case you need to be able to talk to people. Well guys, that's going to wrap up this video of 20 items that are budget friendly for your next nature and wildlife photography adventure. Let me know down in the comments below what other pieces of gear uh, that are not related to your camera, lens, or binoculars. I would love to hear about them. Remember, there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. So get out there and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you with your cameras. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers.